We're taking a look today at 007, GoldenEye Reloaded, James Bond, the game, the remake, the remaster. The one, the only. Nate, you're here today. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. Uh, you're not paid at all to be here or to pretend to be my friend on live streams. Not paid at all. And we are glad to be taking a look today at James Bond, a film franchise we both love uh, and a game that you grew up with. I did not. So Yeah, I probably put in five to six hundred hours on this game on the Wii. On the Wii. Just okay. on multiplayer. I played that game almost every single day of my life. Yeah, on the original release. Yep. So now we're looking at the remaster and we're taking a look at the things it did right. Our first thing is definitely the voice acting. Kind of. <laughs> kind of. Because I I gotta commend you. If you make a movie tie-in game in any way or connected even loosely to movies, and you get the original voice actors of the characters, there's something good about that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, like, you you obviously took the effort to do so, but I will say that Daniel Craig playing James Bond in this seems really bored. Yeah. Uh, it seems like he's checking his phone every time he talks, but... I'll take the fuel tanks. I'll get the weapons cache. Last one out buys the first round. You're on. Yeah, it's. I guess it's kind of a mixed bag because, on the one hand, it's cool because we got Daniel Craig and not like dollar store Dennis Leg or something, <laughs> but, you know, it's. Uh, <laughs> but on the other hand, it's like he doesn't sound interested. No, it's, he seems like he's really bored. It kind of seems like his hand is outstretched, like, just give me the money. And then he <laughs> yeah. kind of just, like, says his lines and then moves on with his life. Yeah, it really does, yeah. I think Judy Dench sounds a lot more interested in the movie, like, she, or in the game. She sounds like she does in the movies, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but Craig does not seem too <laughs> hyped to be there. I wonder if there's any behind-the-scenes stuff on that, because I'd love to look it up. Yeah. Uh, and see if he looks as bored as he sounds. <laughs> but it is really cool that he was Oh, for sure. Game. Our second thing we have, too, is that there definitely is a good selection of weaponry in this game. It does have a lot of guns. They're not all perfect, but I think what you said is true. None of them are terrible. They're all usable. Yeah, I think uh, if we're comparing this to something like Call of Duty or yeah. uh, other shooters like that, um, the problem with Call of Duty is that it has a ton of guns, Yeah, but probably a fourth of them are just bad. Yeah, they're, like they're literally not, not useful. Yeah. This one, I would actually make the argument that every gun in the game is at least useful yeah. and fun in its own way. Like, there's not any bad guns. I would agree with you. There's ones that are better than others, but none of them you pick up and you're like, well, this is worthless. Right. You know, it's not like playing Black Ops 3 and you pick up the Shiva and you're like, well, I might as well just be fighting with my fists. Yeah, exactly. This is, this is something where every tool is actually interesting and usable. Yeah, you can you can actually pick up a gun, any gun in the game, and it actually it works. Yeah, so. and, and I like the way that they... Honestly, speaking of weaponry, and it's not even something I wrote down... I really do like the way the sound design plays into that too. Like the guns all sound great. Yeah, like, they, and they all sound different. They all sound different. They all have good reloads. Like the bullet bounces sound different. Uh, and it's sound design is probably one of my favorite things in this game and something you see throughout even the main menu with the noises and everything. It's just very spy-like. Uh, and the music too is yeah. really good. Yeah, combined with the music. I mean, we didn't write any of that down, but all that stuff does add to the atmosphere a lot. Right. I also think it's good that this ties into the Daniel Craig Bond continuity if you want it to. Like, it doesn't have to be there. Yeah, like, it takes place between Quantum of Solace and Skyfall. Yep. If you want it to. Like, yeah. it, it does not affect the story, but it, it does enhance the story. Yeah, I think it certainly can enhance the story because you get another entry into Bond. My argument against it enhancing is that unlike certain other games like i haven't played bloodstone yet i've heard it's a lot more interesting of a story i would argue unlike that this doesn't add a lot to the story it's more like another outing with the craig bond if you want to experience it. right uh and if you have like a passion for that version of bond i also do think it's respectful of the continuity like the, it doesn't retcon anything it doesn't really change anything the one retcon i would say is that this is mostly it, it is essentially the plot to the original Pierce Brosnan and Goldeneye. It's tweaked, changed around a bit, but it's very similar. So it depends on how you interpret Bond, I think. Because if you interpret it as the timeline starts with Connery 
and goes all the way up to Craig, you know, which some people do. Yeah. And each of these is a different James Bond, like taking on that name just like the 007 number. Then it affects the continuity of the movies because right. obviously then it overrides Pierce Brosnan. But if you see each Bond as his own separate continuity, which I which do, a lot but... of other people do too. Yeah. Uh, I think it depends on your take. Then it doesn't affect anything at all. Yeah. I I am happy that they did. Going off the second take, I am happy that they did take like an original story. Yeah. Because the original GoldenEye story is actually really cool. Yeah. So I think it's I think it's neat that they brought it back and made it the story for like a Daniel Craig game. Yeah, I agree. And I think that uh it plays it safe, but it's it's somewhere where it's fine to do so because this was an established story that people loved already. Right. So our next thing that we have that we really enjoyed was actually the fact that um like who this is aimed at it's rated t so this is obviously you know a, a children slash teenager game uh because all children are playing t games really like if you know no no yeah, not at all <laughs> it's very true it is so i think that this is actually a good introductory shooter game like this is something that i mean personally i don't really care like for the most part about video games what my kid is playing unless it's like something ridiculously controversial right. <laughs> but like for the most part i feel like any parent could feel comfortable letting their kid play this like there's not a lot of graphic content at all very minimal language but it's not like a game that's really toned down either like it, right. it still feels like a competent shooter yeah and it the game itself kind of makes you feel like a spy or a soldier um one cool thing about it was actually you can actually choose what play style you want to do yeah if there's many many parts in the game that allow you to do more stealth but you don't have to do that you can just run in and start blasting the gun away if you really want to yeah and that's something that we'll talk about it in difficulty how you play will definitely depend on the difficulty setting uh when we get into you know the the things the game did wrong because like it is great that they have these different styles. I would argue you're like mainly incentivized to use stealth on the harder difficulties, but you can choose to do it either way. And and it does play into Bond too, like especially Daniel Craig's James Bond, like he's very much a go loud Bond, especially for the first couple movies. He starts to tone that back into more of a stealthy approach. He can still use it in the early movies. It just depends. So I think this does fit in too in that timeline with who Bond was. So. Yeah, yeah, especially since it takes place right after Quantum. Yeah, or he, like somewhere between yeah. Quantum and Skyfall, because you don't. There's not like a hard timeline for right. these great movies. And he really started to, if you were to take them in order, he really started to kind of tone down his approach in Skyfall. Yeah. So uh, this would make sense that it was kind of before that. Yeah, it's sort of going from a military, like a military spy, to more of a spy. Right. A, a transition there. I do like that as well. The final thing, actually, and this is the best part of the game that actually makes it worth owning still, I think, to this day, uh, if you have friends like to play <laughs> well, with you. Well, that's a problem. <laughs> if you have friends to play with you, the multiplayer. Oh, is, the multiplayer is great. great. It's honestly great. It's the best part of the game by far. Yeah, and I got to say, even though they shut down the online multiplayer, I put so many hours into that. That was so fun. Well, and I know I keep saying this so many times, but I just, I love the online multiplayer. Base. I remember, too, you, you maxed out your character. Yeah, uh, I believe. And then what happened? You're like, we got like yeah, corrupted. Yeah, so so, here, <laughs> so here's the thing. I actually had a Wii, and then I I played the multiplayer so much. Which, by the way, this was a problem I had with the online multiplayer. It took you forever to level up. Yeah. But anyways, I got all the way to max level 56. Then my Wii actually broke. Like all my data got corrupted, so we got a new one. And then I maxed out my character again. And then that Wii broke. And then by that point, we got a Wii U. And then I just like started to play it again, but then I kind of just stopped. Well, and they shut down the server yeah, shortly after exactly. you got the Wii U. Exactly. So yeah. it was like, so <laughs> I maxed out my character twice, which took forever. Yeah, and the but. annoying thing is maybe there is some way, you know, through back doors to host your own online party with this game still because there's a lot of unofficial ways to play multiplayer even on modded consoles yeah uh, but the official means for playing this are gone right so it i just, do think it's sad to yeah, me but it is sad i don't think anyone would really be on it anymore right um, but like it's too bad that some of these huge companies like you know who can very easily afford it like who could if you think about it they could afford to keep up a couple servers for this game and right. just leave it alone yeah uh, they always shut off stuff like this after a certain amount of time and then it just becomes 
dead. But you and I played it on split screen. Uh, you wiped the floor with me literally every match. <laughs> I don't think I ever beat you. Probably because I have like 600 hours of experience in this game. Yeah, and I have like five. <laughs> uh, but it was really fun. Like, I love the weaponry. I mean, even things like the Moonraker pistol, the yeah. Moonraker laser, like the, the gold-plated revolver. Yeah. There's like a lot there. that I You don't even find a lot of this in the campaign, really, though, too. No, one thing I wish they did add for the reloaded one was actually bots. Yeah. Because he, the thing is, if you have friends that you can play split screen on, split screen, split screen is even fun. Yeah. But if you don't have friends that would want to play the game, right. you should have bots that you can just mess around with. Well, and that's the thing, too, is, like, for me, um, not to get too off track, but, like, I have friends, too, where it's, like, uh, with you and T, it's, like, you know, you will play older games with me. But there's also people I know where it's, like, that just would not be interesting to them. Right. Where it's, like, oh, this is a game from 10 years ago. I'd rather play whatever you know on yeah. the ps4 or xbox one or whatever um so like that's that is definitely a problem now is the player base but it's just such a good multiplayer and it it must have been an amazing experience uh especially for you because this was your main first online shooter uh second main Same, first second. I, I played battlefront on on the mac oh okay. back in the day <laughs> yeah i guess that does count yeah but it was your first like main first person yeah yeah so like this is obviously and you are a big fan of shooters now. i am a so, huge shooter fan so, so this so. must have been sort of a a gateway into it the was, general actually, and actually coming from a house where my mom didn't really want me playing more of the hardcore shooters Ooh. i know scandalous yeah scandalous we got a rebel here well this was actually one that she let me play when i was younger yeah so i played the heck out of it so it does make <laughs> sense too that it really is something that i think anybody can play right. and enjoy uh sadly it's only on the xbox 360 and ps3 now i'm sure you can find files for it for pc maybe someone did a conversion but it wasn't officially released there no so that might be hard um but you know those an emulation are pretty much your only access to this game anymore and if you have a 360 it's definitely worth the ten dollars or eight dollars it was to pick it up yeah even just to play the story mode yeah so hey i'm glad you guys suggested that we play this and actually go through and review it uh we will definitely be doing five things that did wrong in the near future here so let us know what you think about this video in the comments down below did you play this game do you have an interest in the james bond games love them hate them movies what are your thoughts and be sure to check out the Discord where we have a community of gamers who are oppressed but have band together to live in a society online where we take care of each other and talk to each other about our personal needs and interests. Uh, you know, if you're a fan of comics, movies, anything in between, be sure to join. And we'll see you in the next one. Have a great day.